The Great Basin of Idaho, Oregon, and Nevada is one of the last places in America that still practices the old traditions of branding their cattle, riding the big loop, etc. Yes, there are trucks, trailers, and trucker hats, but I believe that in the Great Basin, it is probably one of the closest places you can get to being in the past. Ride, ride, ride on through time for the cities they're whistling wide. Ranching in the Great Basin started in the 1850s time frame, predating the cattle drive era, which kicked off at the end of the Civil War. What exactly happened in 1850? One of the biggest people groups in the Great Basin that moved there in the 1850s were the Basque people. They come from a place between Spain and I believe it's France, and they have a unique language. There is, their origination is quite unknown, but we do know that they migrated to the Great Basin region of Idaho, Oregon, and Nevada in the 1850s. And they became basically sheep herders and cattle herders. They were promised by their relatives who had come here that if they came, they would have a better life. The American population also began introducing huge populations of Hereford cattle and Angus cattle into the region. The cattle and sheep operations in the Great Basin region of Idaho, Oregon, and Nevada provided the mining camps of Virginia City and Unionville with the food they needed to get their gold and silver. That's critical. This is an important piece of information. In late 1860, the railroad connected the Great Basin region to the West Coast, specifically San Francisco. Hang on to that. Here is where I think it gets interesting. If you haven't already, make sure you go and like this video and share it with your friends so that we can get the word out there. So that was a brief introduction to cattle and sheep in the Great Basin region. Now let's get down into what I like to call the nitty gritty and why this matters to you. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Tell me. Who is this Encarnacion? I believe that the Great Basin buckaroos are forgotten by historians because the railroad that went there in the late 1860s, predating the cattle drive era, cut off, basically cut the legs out from underneath the buckaroos from participating in the cattle drive era. You see, in the cattle drive era, it was critical that people took their herds and pushed them north from Texas into places like the Dakotas. And from there, they would ship them off to Chicago and New York. Whereas in Nevada and Oregon and Idaho, you could just take your cattle to the closest railroad, which compared to the Texas cattle drives was super close. In Texas, they had to go thousands of miles Whereas in the Great Basin region, they only had to travel their cattle hundreds of miles. But that doesn't answer our question. Why do historians ignore the rich history of the buckaroos in the Great Basin region, even though they didn't participate in the cattle drive era? Historians ignore the Great Basin buckaroo because they did not participate in the cattle drive era. Is that wrong? Personally, I believe so. Here's why. There were hundreds of thousands of animals in the Great Basin region. The Great Basin buckaroo is one of the richest histories in America. The herders of the Great Basin provided that region with a stability that was not brought out by the mining camps. In fact, the agriculture industry in the Great Basin actually is still around today providing stability and the people that participate in that generally are more reliable than the people that are mining that are just coming in for a few years and leaving. 
that was basically the same thing that was happening back then. You see, people would come and try and get their gold and silver, but they weren't sticking around because there was no reason for them to. Once the gold and silver was gone, they left the region just as they found it, whereas the herders, the cowboys, the buckaroos, they actually came, they stayed and established generations of people. Historians would be careful to remember that just because a people group is not factoring into these giant schemes, these large ideas of what it means to be American doesn't mean that they are insignificant. I believe that we here at Broomtail Country and you, this is your call to action by the way, can change this idea, this perception that the Great Basin Buckaroo does not matter. Here's my solution. You can start buying historical works on the Great Basin Buckaroo. This will encourage historians to one, start making more of it. Two, the publishing companies will start picking up books based on the Buckaroos and the Great Basin in general. The last thing you can do is to get on social media like YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever, and just start using the hashtag Buckaroo, Great Basin, or even just looking for people that still uphold those old traditions that stabilized a region. No historian wants to write a history with an uncertain fate. What I mean by this is no historian wants to write a piece of work that nobody's going to care about. So we as the consumer, the ones who go out and buy the books, we have the ability to shape. We basically can shape historians and their view on the Great Basin Buckaroo. This is Broomtail Country. Thanks for sticking to the end. Adios.